Hey guys, Bill Rapier here with Amtech Shooting. We're on kitbadger.com today and we're gonna talk about mounting a scope onto your rifle properly. Mounting your scope to your rifle properly is super important. If you don't do it, uh, you're gonna end up with all sorts of inconsistencies. Inconsistencies either because you, uh, your cheek weld isn't right or inconsistencies because something ends up coming loose. Uh, inconsistencies when you're shooting further distance because you're not actually mounted straight, right? Everything vertical and square on itself. Uh, all sorts of problems that are caused if you don't pay attention when you first mount your glass. Big picture what we're doing here. We're going to mount the scope rings to the receiver of the rifle and then we're going to mount the scope onto the scope rings. Very important that everything is plumb and level with our glass to our rifle while we're doing that, and that our cheek weld is adjusted properly and our eye relief is adjusted for our body type. The process we go through to set all this up uh, starts with mounting the, well, first off, setting up the rifle on the tripod, right? That allows us to have a, a, a stable, a solid platform so that the thing isn't sliding back and forth. So that's the first thing we do is, is we get the Arca rail bolted in um, onto the mount right here. Then we put the, the rings on. This is a one piece ring. Generally, I prefer one piece rings if possible. It's, there's just less, less things that are gonna go wrong with it. Uh, we put, I, initially, I just put it on and I finger tied it and then I'll place the scope. Uh, into the rings, no, no top covers on the rings, and I'm gonna shift it around and make sure that the eye relief is proper. Now with that, I'm gonna be adjusting the length of pull on the stock and also the cheek weld. So uh, first off with the cheek weld, what I want is when I get behind the gun, I want it to be repeatable, which means generally I like to have uh, the, the cheek pad this riser right here actually hitting my cheekbone right here. Now the amount of force that you have to push into it that's going to be something that you're going to have to figure out with uh, you know just as you shoot more but it, it should be the same amount of force that you have the same time and you should be able to get behind there just completely in your natural point of aim and just put that that cheekbone on your riser right here and then that would get you your proper height, right? So that's gonna ensure that you don't have scope shadow on the top or the bottom end of the scope. Then I'm going to make sure that I'm not having to crane my neck forward or pull it back like that. That's, I'm gonna adjust that in part with the length of pull and then also in part by pushing the scope forward and backwards. Uh, that will either, if, if I'm too close to my optic, I'll have a concentric ring around the scope like this right here. And the same thing, if I'm too far away from my optic, I'll have the same thing. It's important that when you do this, you close your, get into your position, right? Obviously with an unloaded weapon, get into your position with your eyes closed initially, and then open your eyes and get that snapshot of where you're supposed to be because our eyes will naturally, they wanna, they wanna get us behind the glass. Uh, so you'll naturally try and either crane your neck forward or pull it back. So it's really important that as you get behind there, get into your good solid shooting position with your eyes closed and then open your eyes and get that snapshot of where you're at. Make sure that you don't have any scope shot, shadow. Once I'm sure that I don't have scope shadow, right? I, I've, I've adjusted my length of pull. I've adjusted the riser. Uh, I've adjusted the scope forward and back to where it needs to go. Uh, then I'm gonna start tightening everything down. Once we have our length of pull and our eye relief set properly, now it's time to make sure that everything is level. So uh, this MPA stock has a bubble level in it and my rings have a bubble level in it as well. And then uh, at the 100 yard line, I've got a piece of 550 cord with a weight tied to it. And that gives me a, a true uh, a plumb line. And so what I do is I get behind the, the gun and I make sure that my bubbles are level on both the, the gun and the glass, or both the gun and on the, uh, on the rings. And then I line up my, my crosshairs on that string. And you'll be able to see, if because the, the string is gonna be vertical. And then because we've aligned our, because we've checked for level on both the stock and on our, on our rings, we're gonna know that that is also level. So now all we have to do is we have to shift 
the glass in the rings in order to make sure that the glass is actually level as well. If we deviate from it, why this is important, guys, if our, if our scope has a little bit of a cant in it while we're shooting, and this matters when we're shooting distance, okay? If, if our scope has a little bit of a, of a cant in it and I need to shoot a hold with it, now all of a sudden I'm placing, my rifle's gonna be at an angle. So I'm gonna have some significant deflection uh, from where I need to be if, if it is not, if everything is not perfectly level. Now that we've gone through the process of adjusting length of pull, adjusting our height on our riser, and then making sure that our glass is level, that the crosshairs are level, uh, now we go through the process of actually tightening everything down. So I'll apply Loctite, and I'll start with the, the base, right, with uh, attaching the rings to the receiver of the rifle. So apply Loctite to it and then start cranking it down. I will go with a pattern, right? I don't crank one all the way down to, to the, the, the correct torque spec and then do the next one. I do them all finger tight first and then I go about halfway to the torque spec and then all the way to the torque spec. And then I'll check a couple times just to make sure that they're torqued in properly. Then I'll move up to the top portion of my rings and I'll do the same thing here. I end up putting Loctite into each one and then since I did not have a, uh, I did not have my fix-it sticks with me today, I'm using just this little Torx head right here. And I just use the, the short end of it with my thumbs and I crank that part as, as hard as I can, but this allows me, this basically is a governor for myself so that I don't over crank it. Cause you can absolutely over crank if you use the whole leverage on this you know, from, from this right here. So I just hold it this way and I'll get it as tight as I can like that, knowing, again, you have to know yourself. I know that I am have a higher propensity to over crank something than to under crank something. So I'll use the smaller end of it. I'll crank it as hard as I can with the smaller end. Uh, and it's gonna be Loctited. And then after I've Loctited it all in place, then I use my Sharpie to mark each one of the spots on, on my bolts and that will then show me if if things are loosening up on me it just brings a smile to your face look at that So we just sent the first six rounds and got everything lined up, got the, uh, the rifle laid in with the tripod, put the crosshairs right here, first shot was up there. I went ahead and sent a total of three. It's always good to, to shoot groups of at least three or five generally on, on the bigger calibers. I'll shoot groups of three on the smaller calibers. I'll shoot groups of five. Uh, so first groups up here, I measure. This is one of the reasons why the first focal plane scopes are so awesome. I just measure from the center of the crosshairs where I was holding to up here. It's two and a half mils. Crank my scope down two and a half mils. Then I measure what this distance is right here. It was about five to six tenths of a mil. Cranked five, five tenths right, and we're right in there. So with, with, with six rounds, um, we're good. We're going to shift over to a heavier weight paper now that uh, where the target won't quite explode like that and we'll kind of see what we're doing with uh, group size. End up like Every optic is different. So much. One of the things I really like about the, the Vortex Razor Gen 2s is the way you adjust it. I think it's one of the most intuitive designs out there where you basically, to, to make this adjustment right here, I pop the top cap off. 
I loosen the three set screws and then there's an internal uh, L, you know, mechanism to, to, to rotate it. Now you don't get the audible clicks, but you do have down to one tenth milliradian uh, hash marks on there and you just stick your screwdriver in there and you crank it over and it does the same thing as, as you would with the, with the audible clicks. So, and then that way your glass or your, your actual scope ring stays zeroed. So none of the having to slip it afterwards, you actually, while you're zeroing the thing, you're, you're actually slipping it. Uh, and then you just lock it all in place and now your zero, uh, is, is actually at zero, which is really important, right? So our, our elevation turret, when we're at our 100 yard zero, it says zero. And then the zero stop on these is either a half a mil or a full mil negative, which is good. You wanna have a little bit of negative travel with your zero stop. So after, after the, the first two groups that we talked about, we, we shifted over here to this a little bit heavier weight. This is a half inch grid. Uh, sent the first three right here. I was about half an inch low. So I, I ended up, I came up two tenths and that put me a little bit higher than I wanted to be. And then so the third group, I had one, one flyer, but most of my elevation was, was right on the line, right where I wanted to be. So I'm happy with where this is, you know, obviously, you, you continue to gain confidence in your zero the more you shoot it and the more you make cold bore shots with your zero. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm gonna crank, crank everything down and we'll do some more shooting and get some velocities next. A Couple things to keep in mind as you're refining your zero. Number one, don't chase it, right? It's really easy to end up burning through 30, 40. I've seen guys burn through more than that, you know, chasing a 10th or two tenths up or down, right? Or, or a little bit of windage. Uh, get to where you're within a tenth or, or two tenths and you're probably going to be good. Uh, also very important guys, don't over tighten, right? Again, this goes back to know yourself. So as I, as I have to loosen up some small, uh, some salt, small set screws to, uh, you know, to, to get my actual zero. Uh, when I retighten them, it's, it's all just, you know, as tight as I can get, but just with, with two fingers and, and know yourself, right? A little bit, actually not quite as tight as I can ever make it, uh, because it's, it's, it's easier to break your, your gear than, than you would think. After we've mounted our scope and our rings properly, then we can get a good zero. After we have a solid zero and guys I, I cannot emphasize enough you have to be very confident in your zero so that means we cheat as much as possible uh, there should be no play in the gun when when you're done with your zero you should be a hundred percent confident once that's accomplished then we're gonna go we're gonna get data on it in this case we're slapping a magneto speed on the end of it it's a really good chronograph and it tells us how fast our bullets are going and then we can go okay i'm shooting in this case i'm shooting black hills 215 grain burger hybrids uh, they're going right around they're averaging 3,000 foot a second out of this 26 inch proof barrel uh, and so then i can plug that data into my applied ballistics kestrel right both on the straight kestrel side and on the you know and or on the the iphone side of things the app side of things so you plug that in and then we need to gather a couple more data points. Those data points are basically once we plug in all the, you know, what the type of bullet is, how fast it's going, how fast it's spinning out of here, then we can go and the, the program is gonna give us three different distances that we should true our guns at. Generally, the first one is gonna be while, you know, while you're still supersonic. Uh, the second one is going to be just before the round starts going into that transonic range because the, the, the bullet will start doing some weird stuff as it goes transonic. And then the third velocity is after the bullet is stabilized and now it's subsonic. That's in a perfect world. We don't always, it's actually very rare that we get to do all three of those, but generally at, at least try and get two distances that you're going to true your guns at. And what that allows, when we say true, true your rifle, 
basically what you're doing is you're taking the data to the best of your ability and you're plugging it into a computer. And we've got some amazing drag models now. Um, so we're plugging in all the data points and then the computer spits out, okay, at 493 yards, your hold should be 3.3 mils. And then we shoot, we dial 3.3 mils, we shoot, three, or we shoot the, the 493 and we realize actually we're shooting uh, four tenths high, right? So we go, okay, actually I should be at 2.9 mils. So you crank, crank it down to 2.9 mils, shoot it again, confirm that you're good, and then you tell the computer, this is what you think, computer, but this is what it actually is, and then the computer will model that, you know, both for further distances and below you. And then the more times we can do that, uh, it just, it, it will give you better and better data, and then it will give you a better firing solution for distances that you've never shot at. The rifle we're shooting today is a custom Ulta shooting solution rifle. It's based off of a Defiance Deviant Action with a 26 inch proof carbon fiber wrapped barrel and an MPA ESR chassis. Uh, I really like the chassis guns. Uh, they just, they seem to be as close as possible to an AR and, and the AR has just always felt the most comfortable for me. Uh, the rifle is topped with a Vortex Razor HD2 4.5 to 27 with the EBR 2C reticle in it. It's a mil mil scope. That's what I recommend everyone shoot a mil mil scope with a drop down reticle in it. The rifle is sitting on top of a really right stuff carbon fiber tripod with an Anvil 30 ball head. It allows for some pretty awesome standing and seated shooting positions. Um, it's really amazing what the technology has done. The rifle has a Gen 2 APA Fat Bastard muzzle brake on it on bolt guns. I think they are invaluable. They really help with uh, keeping your shooting position, being able to self-spot. The trigger in this rifle is a Timney Calvin Elite trigger. The rings on the rifle are Hawkins Precision Heavy Tactical Scope Mount. Hope you guys found this helpful discussing how to properly mount your glass and your rings on your rifle and then zero properly and some of the other ancillary things that go along with that. Whether you are just getting started and you're, and you're building your first rifle to go hunt with or whether you're, you're trying to shoot a thousand yards or two thousand or, or further than that, the fundamentals are the same. If you don't pay attention to detail when you mount your equipment, you're going to end up having problems in the long run. Guys, as always, training is the most important thing. It doesn't matter as much the type of tools that you have. What matters most of all is that you have the proper training because you can get a lot more done with a higher level of training. One of the things we talk about is whether it's a software or hardware upgrade, we always want to take the software upgrade. So go out there, get the training, upgrade the software, and then you can, then you can use that. Uh, to accomplish whatever mission it is, whether it's deer hunting or whether it's, you know, shooting steel out of distance. Uh, I'm Bill Rapier with Amtac Shooting. If you are interested in training with me, amtacshooting.com. And again, we're on kitbadger.com today. Thank you for having me on here.